video, we'll learn about strings in C. In C, a string is an array of characters, plus one more thing. Let's investigate what that is and why it's important. Here are a couple examples of character arrays in C. In the first, we initialize first name to a specific string literal, Lou. So let's draw what's, what's going on here. So we have first name, which is a pointer. Now, Lou is an array of characters. So we have here an array, L O U. Okay. And as we know, the, the name of any array is just a pointer to the first character. So first name is going to be that pointer to the first character in, in the array with Lou in it. Now, any string is an array of characters with a special character called the null character in the end that's signified as backslash zero. And that's what signifies the end of the string. Now, let's look at last name. So last name is a pointer to an array of 10 characters. In this case, the array has 10 things in it. And they're uninitialized. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Um, and being uninitialized, we have no idea what's in there. Could be random characters. Some of them could be null. We get whatever was in memory at the time that it was allocated. Okay. There's no guarantee. And since there's no guarantee of there being a null character, last name isn't yet a string. Let's look at these in Eclipse. In Eclipse, we see the code from the slide. Let's run it. We see that it prints out loose successfully, but not last name. Let's run it in the debugger to see why that is. So I'm hitting F11 to launch my debugger. And if we start to step through here, we see that initially, first name and last name are pointers. And what they point to, eh, it doesn't make much sense there. It's, it's been uninitialized. Okay. Now I go through step through the code. So I've, I've set first name, pointer changes, and now we see that it has the characters L-O-U and a zero at the end. Zero is the ASCII value for the null character. So that's all that's being shown there. Now we, stepping further, we see that last name does indeed have 10 spaces, so zero through nine, some random stuff in there, but there was actually a null character in a whole bunch of places, including right in the beginning. So when it went to print, just saw the null character and ended. Now you might ask, how do we make last name be Garrig? First, we can initialize it like we did first name at the point when we declare it. Second, we could assign it character by character so that we could, one at a time here, replace every single character with the ones that we wanted, including the null character, of course. Third, we could use a library function called string copy, and that'll be coming soon. Let's look at the character by character assignment in Eclipse. So I've done the tedious work of initializing all the characters here in Garrig. And if I run it again, I see that it works. And honestly, we lucked out. If we go back to our debugger here and see, see what's going on with last name, we can see that, that line by line, it's changing all the characters from whatever junk was there into Garrig. And we happen to luck out in that what was stored in memory was a null character right after that. So when I print out last name, that's exactly what I get. I get Garrig, and then, and then it sees the null character and ends. However, there's certainly no guarantee that that's going to be the case. My guess is that if we were going to add a couple other characters to this, so say characters 6 and 7, um, I don't know a couple more random letters here, and run it again. Yeah, so see, we, we get the Luke Gehrig is, but then we get a bunch of junk at the end. And then there must have been another null character after that. Um, but clearly, not a chance you want to take when running your program. The best way to overcome that, of course, is to make sure that you stick in the null character at the end of your string. And you run it, and then you'll be set. So why do we use a null character? Well, it's purely a convenience to show the end of the string. Strings are used so frequently that it's nicer not to have to track and pass around the length as a separate variable. Notice that in printf, we just pass the string, and it prints everything until it sees a null character. 
However, we still need to make sure that we null terminate our strings, which has been a source of bugs and security holes in the past. Contrast this with Python or Java. These object-oriented languages have string objects that track their own length and thus let us focus on problem solving, not on picky details. We've discussed the relationship between arrays and pointers, and in many cases you can use them interchangeably. But there's a distinction when you declare and initialize a string as an array versus as a pointer. Any string initialized as an array is a string variable. The characters are stored on the stack. The stack is a portion of memory that exists as long as the function that it is declared in does. So the variables on the stack go away when the function ends. However, you can modify variables on the stack. On the other hand, any string initialized as a pointer is a string constant. And the actual characters there are stored in a different part of memory that's called code space. Strings declared in this way cannot be mutated. Let's see that happen in Eclipse. So here we have the code from the slide. S is declared as a string variable. T is type pointer to character is a string constant. And if we print out each of them, they work just fine. Let's see what happens here. What if we want the first character in S to be the letter B? So we run that. And that changed to boo. No problem. Let's take the first character within T and make that to be um, H so that it would say boo hoo. Let's run it. And string demo has stopped working. We've crashed our program. Let's look at some library functions provided in the string header file. First is strcpy, or string copy. It takes two strings as parameters, a destination string and a source string, and returns the destination. As you probably guessed from the name, you use it to copy one string to another. Let's continue an example from earlier in this video. We've allocated some space for a string called last name, and then later we want to fill it with a string. We then use string copy to copy the source string, Gehrig, to the destination, last name. It copies it, including the null character, so that last name now equals Gehrig. Let's take a look at a, at a box and pointer diagram for this. So we have last name is a pointer, initially, to some empty space, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then that's on the stack. And up in code space, we have Gehrig, which is a string literal. H R I G backslash zero. By calling string copy, what we're doing is asking it to copy character by character everything down into last name, including the null character. And now that it's in the stack, we can modify it however we like later on in the program. A few additional comments about this function. Dest and source are declared as pointers to characters. In C, arrays are pointers, as we saw when looking at the box and pointer diagrams. So this is equivalent to declaring them to be arrays of characters, as far as we're concerned. Don't let that throw you. Second, since arrays in C are just pointers, their contents are mutable. That means a function can change the contents of an array passed to it. Strings then are mutable too, which if you remember is different than in Python or in Java. Since the string copy function can mutate the destination string, we usually find it simpler just to ignore the return value. Third, you need to make sure that you have allocated enough room in the destination string to hold the source string, including the null character. If not, you could overwrite memory that doesn't belong to you and crash your program. In this example, we didn't have to use 10 we could have used any size that was at least how big? That's right, seven, not six. Six for Gehrig, plus one for the null character. Finally, we can't just assign last name gets Gehrig, because array variables can't. Huh? What do I mean by that? Well, array variables can't vary. Remember, array variables are pointers, but they're constant. Besides, it would require a loop to copy all the characters. But that's exactly what string copy does. Here are some of the most commonly used functions in string.h. We've seen string copy in detail, and the same details apply to the others, so you can refer back here as needed. 
I'll give you a quick summary of each. STRCAT, or string concatenate, is used to append one string to the end of another. We'll use it in a minute. STRCMP, or string compare, is used, well, to compare two strings to see which comes first. STRLEN, or string length, returns the length of the string, not including the null character. Okay, it's your turn. Let's see how you do writing some short code that uses some of these functions. We're given two strings, S1 and S2, as shown. What lines of code would you need to write to get the output, go red, go white, go rose, fight, in the printf? Of course, declaring S3 with just that whole string literal would be cheating. Instead, use what you've learned about string copying and concatenating. Pause the video now and write the code. Let's see how you did. Let's take a look at something that actually wouldn't work the first time. What if we declared S3 to only have 10 characters of space? Remember that that would break things because 10 characters isn't enough to hold both S1 and S2. So chances are you'd be overwriting something else in memory. Here's a better solution. Now you might have actually counted up the length of, of S1 and S2 and put that number in there, and that'd be okay, but what if you were off by one? All right, so it's a lot easier to let the computer do that for you. Now what do we need? We need the length of S1 plus the length of S2 plus one more character. Why one more? That's right, because of the null character. Let's draw what's happening here. So we have S1 is go, ending with an L character. And S2 is likewise go, rows, ending with an L character. We're declaring S3. We're giving it enough space. And we first start off by copying S1 into S3. So it's going to take everything from there, go all the way up through its null character. So I guess the character that, that was before that, that was um, go red, go white, exclamation point, and then there was a space there. Then we're concatenating S2 onto the back of S3. So what that's going to do is it's going to look in S3 for its null character, and it's going to replace it with the other string starting there. So go rows, fight, fight. And then when it's done, um, string concatenate will pull down the last null character as well. So you might have thought of a solution that had string cat S3 to S1 first. Well, how would that work? Well, you'd have S3. Now, when you told it to concatenate S1 onto the back of S3, it's going to look through this for a null character. The problem is, until you initialize S3 with something, you have no idea if there's a null character there or not. So you could get a whole bunch of junk, and then the S1, and then the S2. And chances are you'd overwrite the end of it, if you had, because you wouldn't have room for the junk there in the beginning. So if you really wanted to use that, you, there's one way to get around that, and that's to take S3 and set the first character equal to the null character. And if you do that first, then you could use a couple of string concatenates. That's it. Until next time, I'm Matt. See you later.